Hello and welcome. My name is Anthony Carr with Business Improvement Group, and today we're going to be discussing design of experiments within process validation. We're going to use a worked example of an adhesive bonding process to demonstrate how design of experiments can be used in process validation. What we'll cover today is the project background and the goals. We'll talk about the regulatory requirements in the medical device industry and how process validation is required along with statistical techniques. We'll then talk about how DOE, design of experiments, is integrated and part of the process validation process. And we're going to do that through a worked example of the adhesive bonding process. We'll go through the systematic design of experiments. We'll demonstrate how we use the screening experiments, characterization and optimization, and a confirmation study or capability study at the end. We'll then share the conclusions of the worked example and some of the resources that we've referred to. The process validation from the FDA is defined as a requirement where the results of a process cannot be fully verified. Processes must be validated with a high degree of assurance to ensure that the process is meeting proper requirements. Uh, furthermore, a monitor and control should be put in place to ensure that the validated processes are continuing to perform to the desired performance. Some definitions that the FDA provides us in this guidance document is on validation alone and where we're using objective evidence to demonstrate that requirements are fulfilled consistently. We also define process validation where it's means of establishing by objective evidence that the process consistently produces a result or product meeting the predetermined specifications. And similarly, we have design validation for objective evidence that shows that the specifications conforms to the user's needs and their intended use. For this project, we're going to focus primarily on process validation and we'll discuss how design of experiments can be used to support that activity. The FDA also discusses statistical techniques. Uh, where appropriate, the FDA instructs the medical device industry that uh, they should use statistical techniques uh, to establish, control, and verify the acceptability of process capability of product characteristics. Um, and we talk about sampling plans and sampling methods and that they need to be adequate for their intended use to ensure that uh, any changes within the plans need to be reviewed so that um, any, any conclusions that are drawn are statistically valid. So design of experiments lends itself wonderfully to this because it, it is a, uh, an extremely useful tool in, in applied statistics. And um, when used properly in validation, we wanna follow a progression of designed experiments. Uh, we would first start off with a screening DOE where we have several input variables to a process and we'll want to identify which ones are statistically significant in our process. We'll then run a characterization DOE where we determine the mathematical transfer function relating the process outputs to the inputs and the optimization where we could define uh, the ideal process settings to maximize the capability assuring that uh, the process as provided guidance in the FDA uh, is consistent. With that. So the worked example that we have to use um, and will be the basis of this study is an adhesive bonding process, which is very common in the medical device industry. Um, the study will seek to answer uh, the following questions that many of our clients have as well. Um, one, which process parameters have a statistically significant effect on the adhesive bond strength within this process? And two, what is the process capability using optimal adhesive bonding process settings? So we'll walk through the study to explore these two questions. Uh, here, here's a tool that uh, is used in industry. It's called the SIPOC. And it, basically what it does for us, it, it maps out the process and it helps us identify key uh, potential inputs and uh, outputs for our process steps that we're looking for. And what I wanna highlight here are the key inputs that we're looking at, highlighted in red. Uh, we see that uh, an adhesive brand and the amount of adhesive, as well as the time and temperature of our heat gun uh, could potentially impact the 
um, the tensile force or the, or the, the uh, amount of force that it would take to um, cure the adhesive bond. So we'll use design of experiments to explore those variables. So the first experiment that was set up was a screening experiment. And we find out through this analysis that adhesive drops were significant. Uh, we see that brand A is significantly better and will be selected over brand B. Uh, we could see that in the main effects plot with the steep curve, uh, steep slope of the line, as well as on the Pareto diagram down below, we see how uh, the standard effect, how significant that is, as well as the uh, statistical analysis uh, variance table in the lower right hand corner. Um, so we'll definitely go forward with brand A and we see that three drops were better than one, that the number of drops was significant as well, which intuitively makes sense. Now, we also see that neither heat nor time were significant on their own. However, we do see that the interaction of heat and time were statistically significant. So we'll, we'll still keep those factors in the model, not necessarily because of their individual contributions, but because of a potential interaction so the next uh, experiment that we ran, uh, we uh, fixed the, uh, the brand. So we only used brand A and we further refined the, uh, the number of drops as well as the heat and time parameters. And what we see here is that um, the number of drops was, was not significant. There was, it was not really a significant um, interaction uh, statistically, however, um, you know, Qualitatively, we did see that that more was better, um, and it's primarily due to the fact that uh, there was some saturation going on. So we'll, we'll, we'll cap it off at five. Uh, and then the heat and time each individually were marginally significant. Uh, we see that there's a uh, 0.063, which is just over the 0.05 um, acceptance criteria that we would generally have. Uh, so we'll still keep those in. Uh, and more so, more importantly, we will keep time in because we see that there was one statistically significant interaction. And that was the number of drops and, and the heat time. So as once now that this is characterized, we understand the mathematical model and we're starting to fine tune in the, um, you know, the key performance um, parameters, uh, what we did was we, we started off with a uh, full factorial design and, and then we augmented it with um, both center points and radial points so that we had a central composite design. And the reason why we did that um, is because we there was some indications of some uh, potential curvature in the model and we wanted to be able to capture that. Um, so within Minitab we used uh, the uh, surface plot uh, diagram, which is in the upper left-hand corner. And there we could see um, some of the regions of where we have the, uh, the heat time and the heat, uh, the, the distance, the overall heating factors um, and their, their relative contribution to strength. And we see that the, the strongest, uh, the strongest bonds were created in this lower region where we had minimal time and minimal heat. And uh, we use the response optimizer tool for Minitab to uh, basically dial in uh, some of the parameters to see where a potential factor may be. And we could see here uh, that a heat distance of one inch and a heat time of approximately 16 seconds would provide the, um, the maximum force observed. So with that said, we have what we feel would be um, the, the maximum setting, the maximum uh, force with the settings that we have. So uh, what we do at this point is a confirmation run where we uh, took 30 units at all at the same parameters now, and we look for uh, how consistently we can produce the same result, a strong bond. Uh, and uh, this report here is what's called a uh, process capability six pack. And there's lots of good statistical information here. Uh, the first, we look at the control chart. Uh, it's a time series plot of the, uh, the data that was collected over the devices that were created. And we see that, um, that the individual points are within statistical control. 
we look at the histogram compared to the uh, the specification of uh, two kilograms, and we see that the uh, the mean is is well over the lower specification, the minimum requirement of two kilograms. Uh, we see that the data are normal, which is important for a capability study since we are making a uh, an inference about uh, the quality of this process compared to specification. Uh, it is uh, assumed that the, the data are normal. We did verify that in this plot. And we have what we call a uh, process uh, performance index PPK of 1.52. Now, um, it's, it's generally a measure of quality of how well a process can perform and produce a particular output. Uh, I can tell you that in the medical device industry, typically um, it can vary uh, by company. Um, company by company, we'll, we'll choose different acceptance criteria and we'll also uh, base the acceptance criteria based on risk. Um, but some common levels are uh, 1.33 and 1.66. So uh, this, this particular process would certainly be acceptable at the 1.33 level, uh, but would not pass at a PPK of uh, 1.66. So conclusions of this study that could be drawn. Um, one, just going back to the statistical questions that were asked uh, for the worked example, which process parameters have a statistically significant effect on the adhesive bond strength? Uh, we can say that the adhesive brand was most significant. The uh, adhesive amount and heating were also significant, uh, at least early on when we did the screening. Um, we saw that they were significant and we were able to optimize those to get the strongest bond. And uh, what is the process capability once we do have the optimum uh, adhesive bonding process settings? And we uh, demonstrated within our study that um, we have a PPK of 1.56. And again, if, if the acceptance criteria for this application would be 1.33, uh, this would pass. If it were 1.66, it would not, uh, which goes into my next point of continuous improvement, uh, which is something that uh, all companies should always be striving for as well. Uh, overall, it was good performance. Uh, considerations for future improvements could include an improved measurement method. The uh, manual uh, spring scale method that we were using uh, did demonstrate quite a bit of variation. Uh, fixturing to help ensure repeatable heating distance. So uh, that was a manual process. So there could be opportunities there to reduce, uh, further reduce variation. And then a uh, potentially heat gun with lower temperature settings. Since we demonstrated a lower temperature was better, um, this, this particular heat gun had a low minimum setting of 250 degrees. So if we had uh, other equipment, it could have um, further helped. Uh, now, I should point out that this time, too, this, this was a worked example, not necessarily specific um, application. However, it was very indicative of some processes that some of our clients use. So uh, the, in the end, this study serves as a good case study that um, companies can use to model an approach of using design of experiments within their validation efforts. So it doesn't necessarily make a claim on all. Uh, adhesive bonding processes, but again, serves as a good model for companies to use in their validation efforts. Uh, some of the key resources that we referred to in this study is um, uh, Douglas Montgomery's book on design and analysis of experiments. It's a, um, it's, it's pretty much a standard on uh, reference manual for design of experiments in the industry. And the other is the a uh, guidance document from the Global Harmonized Task Force, which uh, not only talks about process validation, but also talks about some of the statistical techniques that can be used as well. So that concludes our the study. And uh, if you want to learn more about uh, statistical analyses, process validation, or just uh, overall uh, business and manufacturing process improvements for quality and operational excellence, uh, feel free to give us a call. Uh, my number and website are here, my, uh, our email address, and we have a website uh, for training, certification programs, and consulting services as well. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.